Hey there, Father Michael here. Compulsive memorization is a part of many of the world's religions. For example, in Islam, Muslim students have to memorize long chapters, long surahs in the Quran. Jewish kids are required to learn the Seder prayers uh, and the Shabbat prayers in Hebrew. Uh, Catholic young people have to memorize certain prayers like the Apostles' Creed and the Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be. When I was in second grade, preparing to receive my first Holy Communion, I had to meet with the pastor one-on-one -on -one, and I had to recite the prayers assigned to me with the strict understanding that I would not be allowed to receive the sacraments of penance or Eucharist uh, if I didn't demonstrate my ability <laughs> to pray as evidenced by the rote memorization of those key prayers. Well, I was a nervous wreck. I was a shy second grader. Yes, I know, it's hard to imagine, uh, but I was. And so I practiced and I rehearsed out loud. And I sat with my mother uh, and read those prayers again and again and again and practiced and rehearsed and so that when that big day finally came, uh, the big testing day, um, I was ready. I was able to recite all those prayers perfectly. Uh, but the whole process of doing that was very, very humbling. And it turns out that humility is something modeled for us by Jesus, as well as something I think God wants from us. Remember, it was Jesus who first gave us an inkling of what humility looks like. On that Holy Thursday night, when he washed the feet of his disciples, the night he was betrayed. And you remember that Peter was not having any part of that. It's all in John's Gospel. Um, because in Peter's mind, he was the Messiah. He was the Lord. He should not be on his knees acting like a servant. No, the reverse should be true. People should be waiting on him. People should be washing his feet. Jesus should not be the servant of anyone else of lesser humanity. That's the way Peter was thinking. Curiously, the words for uh, humanity, the words humanity and humility share a common Latin root word, which is Humus, meaning dirt, soil. That's an interesting thing, I think. And so with that in mind, you might even go so far as to say that by engaging in humility, we are in fact practicing the remembrance of our humanity, remembering how God created all of us from the dirt at the very beginning of humanity's journey. Way back on Ash Wednesday, we had ashes imposed on our foreheads with the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you will return. And then for the next 40 days during the Lenten practice, we, we did things that would help us remember our humanity. And whether that was through fasting or 
praying or reading the office or studying scripture or being more generous with the poor, it all kind of had the same end in mind. And it was in that journeying from Ash Wednesday to Easter that we remembered how we have tried in this life and repeatedly failed. How we have really strived to be better and yet have fallen short so many times. We remembered how hard we tried to love and ended up betraying. The danger in focusing too much on the negative is we may succumb to the idea that we're worthless and beyond saving, that we're undeserving, forgetting the fact that we are made in the divine image. We are made from the soil. That is a very humbling and grounding, pun intended, notion that I think we should keep in mind. It reminds us that we are all more alike than we are different. And looking at Jesus as the one who is the role model for the fullness of human living, it's clear by looking at the gospel stories that there are literally no tasks that he deemed unworthy or unbecoming for him. He got down on his knees as a slave and washed Peter's dusty feet, took those dirty feet in his hands and lovingly washed them. And it is with that divinity that you and I bear within ourselves we have the power to surrender to God's love and let Jesus wash us clean as well. It's gardening season and I have a ton of gardening tasks on my <laughs> to-do list for today. So I'm thinking about the soil. I'm thinking how God, as the divine gardener, continually works the soil of our humanity. How God is always finding ways to touch our physical bodies. How God is continually blessing our humanity. That's the whole point of religions that have their children memorize all kinds of hymns and liturgies and creeds and catechism responses and prayers to give them a little foundation in the knowledge that God loves them unconditionally. There's a danger, of course, in thinking that, you know, the few things we memorized as kids is enough to get us through this life, and it's not. Those things were clearly intended to be just a launch pad, a starting point. We all know people, I think, I know I do, who think that, oh, I memorized a handful of scripture verses and therefore I know scripture. Or people who, you know, uh, memorize a few beloved hymns and think that they know all about God now. Or, especially for Catholics, I think, we memorize a few prayers and then we fool ourselves into thinking that we know how to pray. It's a process. 
and we're never going to get any of this mastered 100% because it is an always evolving process. Today then, a simple idea, I think. Let's remember to embrace the soil of who we are. Let's embrace humility in order to get in touch with our humanity. And let's be a little more attentive to God's still speaking voice within us, God's word to us today, encouraging us to remember our humanity, to love the humanity in all people that we encounter today, especially those annoying ones. We are just like Peter in a lot of ways. We have passionate professions of faith and then we turn around and we betray. But right now in this moment, the Savior is holding our dirty feet in his hands, trying to wash away the dirt of our betrayals and shortcomings and the dirt of living this life, looking up at us, communicating only love with his eyes. And that's good enough. Pray with me. Loving God. Thank you for the gift of life. For calling our humanity out of the soil of stardust. Help us today to humble ourselves, to try to get through one day without complaining about anything. And help us to be especially attentive to the people you send our way today. Help us to love them as best we can, recognizing our common humanity. And if we are feeling unworthy, help us to remember that we bear the image of your Christ, that we can do even greater works than he himself did, as he told us we would. Amen. And now may the God of peace be with you today and all those you love. Amen.